Hey kids, it's Trusted James from Trusted Explains. We're so looking at the Epic Evolution Allosaurus. You may have noticed this in stores. Uh, it's a ruthless rampage uh, Allosaurus. It was in stores right before Christmas, and here it is for me. And I have uh, a bone to pick with these people, but I'll explain in a minute. So first and foremost, we're looking at the fox. It's really cool. Okay, so to free this beast from its cage, all you need is an official pair of scissors. You clip here and clip here. Now, I will not be going over much detail on the Allosaurus itself because I already have an Allosaurus video I went over all the, the morsel formation, which I mentioned over and over again, all the animals who live there. So this is focusing more on this figure, its ancestors, and also uh, where it fits in. So kind of fun thing to look at. It goes like that. Oh, nope. Oh no. Okay, so first and foremost, I won't lie, when I saw it online, uh, before the preview sneak peek, I kind of got angry. <laughs> so, quick history of Allosaurus in Jurassic World. So Allosaurus, if you don't know in general, is one of the most, well, there's T-Rex, Velociraptor, Carnotaurus, Spinosaurus, Gigantosaurus. Those are dinosaurs who are rising up in popularity. T-Rex have always been popular, so as soon as we know about it. But Allosaurus really was the king of dinosaurs in the minds of people before T-Rex. What I mean by that is, uh, it was the largest predator known in the 1800s, uh, dinosaur known, right? In Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, the original Lost World, before the movie, in the book, um, and for kids who were born in the 2000s, uh, books are, it's like, it's, like a, it's like the information on the iPad, or like Wikipedia, but on paper. It was a crazy idea. Anyway, um, it was the number one animal, and then T-Rex comes along in 1905, and it just takes everything. But, this is an example of toy makers and how they do a thing that I really can't stand, but I kind of get it, and it annoys me, but here we are. So a little side note, uh, Jurassic, the first Allosaurus in Jurassic Park uh, was the Lost World Part 2. It was not in the movie. He, uh, you know, the baby T-Rex was injured, and they, they healed it or fixed it in the, um, the trailer. And so there was a set you could buy, like a lab equipment set, with this Allosaurus, and it essentially could be repaired. So you basically could take off parts of it and see that right there. Um, another example of this was I think the leg bone or thigh or something like that. Yeah, so you can pull off like this part here, this huge meat there. I'm still missing this part here. I bought it online so uh, years later. It was not something you could easily find uh, apparently. So that's kind of an introduction. There was a Jurassic World Part One, 2015 Allosaurus. I mentioned that in the Allosaurus video Part One, so we'll look at that there. But moving forward to the new movies, uh, the, the the so the first. Time we see Allosaurus again is in the one with the volcano, where the volcano erupts something out and there's a new blar. And so we see a juvenile Allosaurus, not specified as a juvenile, but if you remember, Franklin and Claire are in the uh, geosphere, this roll, you know, the volcanic uh, wave has happened and, and the dinosaurs are running towards the cliff and there's a big wall of ash and all that coming this way. And they're in the thing of spinning and they show a small predator running uh, next to it and it looks kind of into it. That was a juvenile source. This is from the Jurassic World Live. I did a video on that earlier in the year. And so this is representing that juvenile because throughout the movie they have it in a cage. It gets sold off the auction. Um, again, they never, I don't think they ever say it's a juvenile. Maybe they do. But it's clearly too small to be an adult Allosaurus. And so, of course, it's any new Allosaurus, so I bought it. And then I said, okay, this is kind of annoying. But when the new movie came out, uh, the last, uh, the Dominion, yeah, the last Jurassic World movie, they, you know, it's a time in which the Allosaurus should have grown up, and we weren't sure if they were going to show it or not, or another Allosaurus. But there was one shown in a dinosaur of Fight Club place in somewhere in Monaco, and so they have this one here, which, in my mind, and this is something kind of important to tell about uh, dinosaurs how they develop over, uh, individually, is that yes, a juvenile would probably be a different color. Uh, maybe it would probably be it's you know the crest we see here are things we see on predatory dinosaurs that often are associated with intraspecies behavior. So the idea is that those animals are interacting with each other and that crest is like, you know, you and I will see an Allosaurus skeleton, which is, or even any living animal, you see two of the same animals, it's kind of hard to tell them apart, they're not like a dog breed or something. But for them, it's very clear. Just like if you and I see each other as humans, we can tell each other apart. And so these crests are very important for that. So you would imagine a juvenile would have smaller crests than the adult. That makes sense too. And again, when I first got this one, I'm pretty sure I did a part two uh, video on Allosaurus, because either this one or this one, I can't remember which one, but maybe both. Uh, uh, and so I was excited because it was, uh, you know, it, it had a more mature front half. What I've always complained about the Allosaurus is 
uh, in Jurassic World, the tail are too small, hence the hardness, you can hardly balance them. That's the whole point of having a large tail. Well, not the whole point. Uh, but it's one of the major factors, having a large tail. And so then I had this one, and it did the thing, and you do the, another button here. That was the thing. Okay, was there noise? I don't know. No, no noise. It just, just does this. Is it like that? Okay, that's what it does. Cool. And so then I go in the store like a year later, and they have this guy here. And so this one is the biggest, one of those bigger size scales. It, just make like noise, yeah, it does. So you, and you can also injure it. I like Allosaurus. It's like a big scary predator, but it's also loaded up in the food chain with T-Rexes around that it can still be damaged. Uh, the DNA code is there as well, all that. I've done it before in the video. So I thought, okay, they made their biggest Allosaurus. For some reason, they still hate me and make a tiny little tail, but whatever, I'll take it. Literally, I'll take it. I mean, I, I paid for it, but I won't. <laughs> I'll take it. But, um, and so then I go to the store right before Christmas, and I see this guy, and I'm kind of annoyed and mad about that, but it's actually, even though the tail isn't necessarily bigger, it is more balanced. And, I'm, and I realize that I want more accurate tail sizes, but you know what? If it balances better, I'll take that. And so here we are. The hands are correct. They are palm to palm. I'm super excited. Yeah, they have three fingers and are palm to palm. Uh, they do not make the first finger any particularly special. But usually we think the first finger will be, you know, small. There's reptiles have a cool thing where in mammals, you'll see like the, we have the same bones across here, 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 like that. With the reptiles, you'll have like two bones, you know, claw, not counting claws, two here, three here, four here, five here, like that, right? And so um, the first one is usually shorter, a different, little different angle. And so this guy, it, it, it doesn't have that design. But overall, if you, let me see, if you push, let's see, what does this do? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, so this is a new gimmick. They roll this little point here. And so, black tongue, I mean, sure. Uh, I do know there was a paper a couple of years ago about dinosaur tongues. Looking at the musculature at the base of what the tongue should be, it reminded, it had more similarities with crocodiles and alligators whose tongues are not very articulate. They don't come out and move around or anything. So, you know, side note there. Uh, the argument, of course, if you don't know, the dinosaurs do not flick their tongues is because the animals, the reptiles that do that are squamates, uh, snakes, lizards, so mosasaurs. And so snakes and lizards will do what they'll go out and have two forks on their tongue. And the reason they have two forks is they're sensing things. If the sense is stronger this way, they will know it's that way. So, and so we have two ears, we have two eyes, two nostrils to smell and direction. When they pull it in the mouth, it rubs against the Jacobson's organ, and that is red and says, okay, it reads what this is. It's kind of like when we smell things, it goes in our nose and we sense what it is. We're like, okay, same thing there. So announcers do not have that. So having a kind of a bigger tongue that doesn't really do much, that makes sense. All that to say that. Uh, what you're looking at here is a little tap here, and if you pull it up, there's higher spikes. Now, what I will tell you about Allosaurus is that, um, well, dinosaurs in general, you'll see a lot of predatory dinosaurs, they're drawing, they're, the people will draw, add plates and rows. Uh, we do see osteoderms, and they're distant cousins of crocodiles, we see many ankylosaurs. Uh, there's not a sense of these kind of spikes, in, or bony spikes, in the allosaurs. If there's anything that's maybe cartilage or whatever, we'll have proof of that to date. But I think it just, you know, it looks cool. Plus, it's extending, so I'm thinking some kind of evolutionary, they've, the lab of Jurassic World have taken these animals and added more genes or something, I don't know. Uh, but that's nothing to be based on, this is nothing to be based on any science. They may have had a row, because they have a neural spine sticking out of their backs, but that would have been encased in skin and muscle. And Allosaurus did not have them tall enough to have a sail, so this is entirely made up. But it's cool looking, I get it. Um, overall, I like, uh, overall, I mean, I like the animal in general. This is, like, it's... I guess it's singing or calling out. Cool. So anyway, I don't know why. I guess the body's like just it's like a tighter fit than these other guys. But I'm looking at this and oh, there's your DNA code. There you go. I was like that dino damage. But uh, and if you don't know, kids, back in the '90s, dino damage that gimmick of taking the skin off was something that uh, was a part of the trademark with said Jurassic Park apart from other toy to toy uh, designers. I will tell you the the tagline was that they had the JP well. Now they have the, the, the they have the JP symbol on the leg for Jurassic Park. And the, the tagline was, if it doesn't have JP, then it's extinct. Which literally means, like, we brought dinosaurs back in the franchise. If they're not brought back, they're extinct. That, that was pretty brilliant. Um, okay, so the head is about the same size. A little well, is a little smaller. I'll just do it this way for you. Like that. Look at that. And so, as far as scale goes. Anyway, um... 
I, I, I wish that, because it looks like a big lizard, like a big, well, like they are saurians, saurians, but it looks like a big crocodile on two legs. It's really weird. It feels like some, it feels like it's a critter from the late traffic that they pumped up on steroids. <laughs> anyway, I just wish that it, that this guy had that guy's stance. That would have been better because we have the way their feet are built. I mean, they all have three toes going forward, a dewclaw going back. That is correct, but it's just it's interesting. I don't know. And I and and what's really sad about all of this is that I know that in about a year I'm going to go into Walmart or Target and it's going to be another Allosaurus, and I'm going to you know. Uh, you're saying, James, if you don't like it, stop buying it, but I, I don't know. So, I mentioned the Morrison Formation many times, but to give you Jurassic Park perspective, the animals that would have lived in its time and in its place would be one Ceratosaurus, not, not one, as a, one solitary one, but one of the first that we're looking at. Of course, Stegosaurus and Allosaurus were closely connected. As I mentioned before, we now, we have found holes in Allosaurus, pubis bones, and ilium, and they're called Dilbert, but the, the tail that only match Stegosaurus tail spikes. We know they're interacting with each other, which is why Dr. Bacher said this is the most deadly dinosaur ever, in his opinion, because it's hitting, like, right there, right? Anyway, in the last two, in the Hemi collection would be the Apatosaurus, who's been gawking at you the whole time, and behind that, our friend, the Brachiosaurus. You say, wait a minute, James, Dilophosaurus is from North America, and from the Jurassic period, did it too live at Allosaurus? Great question. The answer is no, because they live in Arizona. <coughs> Sorry, I almost remember this. These guys are found in Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Dakota. This is found in Arizona, but also they're separated by millions of years. These guys are like 45 million years ago. Here is like 199 or 200 million years ago. So even though they're North America and Jurassic, both the fact that they're late Jurassic and early Jurassic means they're still separated out. So time really doesn't matter, right? And so, with that being said, that is the review of the Jurassic World Epic Evolution Allosaurus. I actually, like, I, I like, I don't know, I just feel, I like it a lot. I don't know why. I just, looking at it, I guess this is more upright. This one feels like it's going to fall. You know, it feels kind of like, I mean, it's, it's actually better balanced than the other two, but it just feels like it's not something. And this one, the way it's just upper and mover, it feels more active, despite being crocodilian. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to do something like Ignea or something really unusual, a Ceratopsian. All right. Thanks.